Welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to make things a little bit more complicated. We're still dealing with inelastic collisions, but in this case, they don't stick together. So inelastic simply means that energy is lost, but in this case, they don't stick together. Now see what happens next. So we have two objects. One has a mass of four kilograms. The other one has a mass of two kilograms. The four kilogram mass has an initial velocity of 10 meters per second. The second mass only five meters per second. So the large mass will catch up to the small mass. They will collide, but not stick together. And let's see what happens. So we want to find the V final, but in this case, of course, they both will have their own V final. So we want to find V final of the first and V final of the second. And actually, probably want to write it the other way around. We probably want to write it as V1 final and V2 final equals question mark. So we want to know their final velocities of both of them. All right, so let's go ahead and try to solve the problem. So we have momentum initial equals momentum final. So the equation now becomes M1 V1 initial plus M2 V2 initial equals M1 V1 final plus M2 V2 final. So since they don't stick together, you do have to account for the momentum of each of the two masses after the collision because they'll go their own separate ways. Now notice that both V1 final and V2 final are unknown and we only have one equation. So actually, we cannot solve this problem unless some other piece of information is given to us. So we're going to do this problem twice. In this example, I'm going to give you one of the final velocities. In the other example, we'll give you some information about their kinetic energy loss. So in this case, we're not going to ask what the V2 final is. We're going to give you V2 final as an extra piece of information. So V2 final, let's say it's equal to 12 meters per second after the collision. So what will then happen to the first object? So in this case, V2 final is no longer an unknown. It's now an unknown, and we only have to solve for one of the unknowns. So there's only one left, which is V1 final. What is the final velocity of this mass if that mass will have a final velocity of 12 meters per second? So you can see that in this case, since you only have one equation, there can only be one unknown or you can't solve it. If someone gives you that type of problem and they don't give you any more information, you can't solve the problem. All right. So let's now continue. Let's solve for V1 final. So we'll move this term over to the left side of the equation. So we have M1 V1 initial plus M2 V2 initial minus M2 V2 final equals M1 V1 final. And finally, we'll solve for V1 final, but we'll move it to the left side of the equation and solve and divide both sides by the coefficient, which is M1. So we end up with V1 final is equal to the left side of the equation, which is M1. V1 initial plus M2 V2 initial minus M2 V2 final and the whole thing divided by M1. All right, so now we're ready. Go ahead and plug in the values and see what we end up with. Okay, M1 is four kilograms and V1 initial is 10 meters per second plus M2, which is two kilograms times five meters per second. So now we have the two initial conditions, the two initial momentums. We now subtract minus M2 V2 final. So minus um, M2, which is two kilograms, and V2 final, it's a positive 12 meters per second. Remember that we always want to make sure we put in the right values, the right signs for the velocities. If it's to the left, it's a negative, to the right is a positive. The reason why we have a negative here is because we simply move that term over to the left side of the equation. All right, now we divide the whole thing by mass one, which is the four kilogram mass. Okay, so what is that equal to? Let's see here, we have 40 plus 10 is 50 minus 24, that is 26 divided by four, 26 divided by four is six and a half. So 6.5 meters per second. Let me quickly check that. So we have 40, 50, uh, minus 24, 50 minus 20 is 26, 26 divided by four, seven times four is 28. Yep, that's correct, six and a half. And so what happens then after a collision, the small mass will move to the right at 12 meters per second. The big mass will have slowed down to 10 meters per second. Again, the only way you can solve that one, if they give you one of the final velocities so we can solve for the other final velocity. 
they could have given you the velocity final for this mass, and then you would have had to figure out the velocity final of that one. It's one or the other. You can't solve for both at the same time unless some other piece of information is given. So in the next video, we'll do the same problem, but instead of giving you one of the final velocities, we're going to give you some information about how much of the energy is lost in the collision, which also will give you additional information then you can solve for both V finals. So if you want to see how that's done, come and look at the next video.